How are you? Good. Thank you for uh, doing this, Adam. No problem. You're welcome. Um, Quite the room so, you have there. Oh, thanks. This is my my little loft. Uh, Love it. Um, uh, so the new album is I Don't Live Here Anymore. And uh -huh. um, I was wondering what the... I, I feel like most albums have, like, there are events that lead to this album. What were some of the events that led to uh, the writing of this album that happened? Um, well, basically, I mean, realistically, just making a record before it, going on tour, and kind of just repeating the process, you know? I mean, I, it's not like... I've, you know, all of, all of a sudden felt um, like I had some moment where I needed to make a record. It's really just, this is what we do, you know? I mean, we were on the road for maybe four months and we had six weeks off and I was um, collecting, you know, little bits and pieces of songs here and there. And we kind of just did a quick little um, journey to upstate New York, me, Dave and Anthony. Yeah. Um, and we just started putting down some ideas that I had, like we just sat in a circle and kind of, um, started putting some ideas down. And then I feel like at the end of that trip, which was like basically the end of 2018, I was like, oh, okay. So there's two songs or actually at the time there was like four that we did there that I was like, these are cool, you know? And so I basically just used it as a spark to every time I was home instead of, doing something else, I was just, I would just get home from tour and go right into a studio and do the same thing, start writing or um, putting a band together um, for a session, you know, kind of curating a band of my friends for a specific song. And then um, we did that basically all of 2018. And then we started recording it in, at the end of that year. When you, uh, when you, when you say you're, you were like collecting songs, like, what is that? What like what are what are, what is it? Uh, what do you like? What are you grabbing onto or 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 noting down when you're you're collecting a song? Well, so it's sometimes it's just little bits and pieces. I mean, obviously with the iPhone now, it's really easy to um, to do that. You know, just to run a memo and like record whatever that quick idea. You know, like if you're playing something par that you like. Mm -hmm. So usually it'll be on the piano. I'll just be playing the piano, I'll kind of stumble on something. I'll just record it quick so I don't forget it. Um, strumming a guitar with a melody, same kind of thing. Uh, there was that song on the record, I Don't Want to Wait. And that one, I remember we were in Singapore on tour right before March. So it was like February, I think we were in Singapore. And um, I remember like walking around Singapore and I had the entire chorus to I Don't Want to Wait, like, as a vocal melody, which I never really, usually my stuff's usually, it's always like music based with a melody on there, but rarely do I just have a melody and words, you know what I mean? I had the whole thing. Yeah. And so I just sang it into my phone, you know? So um, in like Living Proof, I had, I had strummed basically four chords like super quickly in Philly one day, like three times the speed of the actual recording, but just to get like something down and then ended up revisiting it. Um, six months later in the studio and kind of being like, oh yeah, this was cool. It's, and then an hour later you have like a song, a totally different song. Cool. Um, it, there's a, there's a song on, on the album called Rings Around My Father's Eyes. Um, what was your dad like? Or is he, is he, is he with us? Is he, uh -huh. what is he like? What is he like? I mean, he, you know, he loves, um, what is he like? He loves, he lives in Boston, you know? Lived in Boston his whole life. Um, loves the Celtics. <laughs> loves the Red Sox. You know. Um, loves his kids, you know. Um, loves his crossword puzzles. Um, yeah, he's just a... Uh, he's a pretty simple guy, you know. He really is a simple guy. Uh, but, um, you know, he likes to... Uh, he likes to burn outside. He likes to uh, burn wood, you know, yeah. in rural Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he's just, you know, he, he had a, he was in retail for 40, 50 years, um, had his own business forever. Um, 
It's one of those things. Yeah. Um, I mean, and now, I, I mean, now he's like a big, you know, he's a big fan of the band. I mean, he's a, the music, I mean, he likes the music in the sense that it like, it's the, it's the bond between me and my friends. It, it's not so much, everyone's like, oh, he loves rock and roll. It's like, it's not so much that he loves the music. Like he can't, doesn't know critically really what the music is. Um, he knows that he's like some are, he likes the ones that are faster and have a good beat. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But like, it's more just like the thread that connects me with the band and the camaraderie of our extended group, you know, the band and our crew and everyone's very, very close. And, um, and everyone's like, you know, my dad's kind of guy, you know what I mean? So yeah, he likes he likes that aspect. I think more, more so than like the actual music per se, which is which is which is, you know, no surprise. Yeah, um, I heard that you had a son. Congratulations! Thank you. And what is a what is a trait that your dad has that you hope that you pass down to your son? Hmm. Um, well, yeah. I mean, really, at the end of the day you know, he was around a lot and, you know, that's, um, that's what I hope to be able to pass down as well. Do you think that's difficult being on the road, being a musician? Well, I haven't really experienced it yet because we haven't been on the road. True. So I'm not looking forward to it, but, but it's what we do. And it's, you know, yeah, you know, I mean, playing music and, you know, it's what we do. And this is, um, part of part of the thing but um yeah i mean there's you know there's a lot of things you know you learn and you try to um you know instill the things that you as you get older you're like oh i get it now you know what i mean you're like i see it you know and um basically the main thing is just to let him be who he wants to be you know that's the most important thing yeah um I I had I had read that there is a song that references the band Harmonia. Yeah. Who is this band? I've never heard of them. Harmonia is a uh, '70s uh, kraut rock band. Um, and what is it? What's your history with them? Why do you like this band? Well, I mean, it's just one of those bands that, like, when we're, it's just like they're like one of the staples, like one of the classics. So. It's like you start, you get into Noi maybe first and then maybe Kraftwerk and then de depending on who you are, maybe Can or maybe you get into Can first or something or maybe last, who knows. But then somewhere in there you get into Harmonia, which is like really super melodic, sort of hypnotic, uh, kraut, kraut rock and um everybody shared basically all the same members in some capacity. And um, yeah, it was just one of those things like Robbie had played the synth part um, basically in the moment. And I was playing these two chords on the piano and we were doing this for like, like 10 minutes. We were doing this mm -hmm. and he was improvising the synth part and every, he never hit a wrong note, it, but it was like the most beautiful. It was, it was like composed like if you step back and looked at it, you're like, oh, did he compose that the night before? But he didn't because I had just made up the chords on the spot. And in the moment, just because of the sound he had, it reminded me of all that music we loved. But I wasn't going to name it like Kraftwerk's Dream. You know what I mean? But I felt like, <laughs> I felt like noise, but I felt like, you know, Harmonia's Dream was like a different, it was like a different level of a wink. Um, uh, it was also a way early on to remember that recording because it was kind of like a one-off random thing we did in the control room one day. So I was like, I wanted to remember that it was something I usually, if I, if I label something like that, it means that it's worth coming back to, you know? Yeah. I, I would give it like a title. I would love to play a harmonious song out of this. What is sure. the, what is the harmonious song that I should play? Uh, off the top of my head, maybe just play something off, um, off Deluxe, maybe like the first track off Deluxe. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, I also want to know um, what else you're listening to. Um, that, that is like another thing that I would love to 
come out and play a song from like the most recent song that really got stuck in your head or that you couldn't stop listening to? Um, well, actually, to be honest with you, lately I've been listening to Rolling Stones' Voodoo Lounge. Wow. Record, which is, um, there's been a lot of Stones talk because obviously they were in LA for two nights. I should have gone, but I wasn't in town. Um, and everyone, all my friends are going and everyone I know is going or has gone to a different show and they're just like, oh man, it's so good. And I'm seeing all these video clips. And then um, I kind of, the first time I, I saw them on the Voodoo Lounge tour in 94, when wow. my friend Tom's, with my friend Tom and his mom. And it was at Foxborough Stadium in Massachusetts. I mean, it was like, we were so far up. It's like the screen was small. You know what I mean? I could barely see... <laughs> It was like, but I still remember it being like incredible, although I don't really know what I was experiencing. But um, so lately I've actually been listening to Voodoo Lounge going down, a, a, like a, revisiting some Stone stuff. And there's, so I feel like that, need, that record needs to be reevaluated as maybe a modern classic. But the two on there are Out of Tears and uh, Through and Through. Um, out of Tears, kind of like a classic Stones ballad, like piano ballad. Um, and then uh, Through and Through is that Keith song um, made famous by the uh, Sopranos episode. But when you listen to it, I mean, it's just such, it's, I mean, it's a real deal. It's a great, great track. I've been listening to those. It's fun because when I start listening to um, songs, like when I get into a, a, like an obsession and just listen to the same thing over and over, then my kid, when I put it on, he immediately reacts because he's heard it now like 10 times, you know? Oh, so yeah. It's kind of cool to see a two-year-old hear Keith's voice, like, you know, grizzled voice. And then he's like, <laughs> he reacts You're like, oh, yeah, it's Keith Rich, you know? Um, <laughs> <It's wild. laughs> but, um, but yeah, and then out of tears, we were playing, um, teaching him how to play air piano on the table last night. And he was getting <laughs> kicked out of it. So yeah, lately, I mean, usually off the top of my head, I'm, uh, always bad at remembering all the stuff I listen to, but um, I would, those two Stones tracks are pretty heavy right now. That's, that's awesome. great. Just great song. I mean, it's just like, you know, Voodoo Lounge, you know, killer, really killer record. And it just, I just remember like the whole rollout of that record. They did like a whole concert special on Fox or someone, some network. And I recorded it on the VHS and Rip came out to Tumble and Dice. There's a whole thing. Yeah. That, I mean, it's like rock and roll was big time back then. It's it's wild how it's like it the moment at the time. You know, it's like you can't help when you grow up or what album is rolling out at that perfect time. But it's like that window and that time. That was the album. That was the rollout. That is like what you remember. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of the same with um, Wildflowers. Because obviously that's like a late period Tom Petty record. But for me being like, whatever, I was 12 or 13, whatever year that was, it was like, that was the contemporary rock record on the radio. Right. So like I, I had heard the other ones like in passing, like I knew them from the radio, but they weren't like, I just didn't reach that crossroad where it was like of that age and on that, on that record. So that kind of became like, my essential petty record you know but my brother's essential one was like into the great wide open or something you know totally that was like so one for me it was like he released an album in 2013 and that was like i was like this is this is the best leonard cohen album because it was right. the album that came out when i was like when it came out when i was alive right um, exactly right thank you for chatting thanks for uh yeah, you're welcome the album uh you're gonna do two nights in milwaukee so we're thrilled about that so uh, can we just yeah, we that? played the Riverside last time um, after, I think, Pitchfork Fest. And yeah. uh, we love it there. My sister used to live in Milwaukee, so. Oh! In Wauwatosa, yeah. Well, I have deep, I have some roots there. Oh, wow. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. That. Yeah, and he, her husband has a lot of family there, so I love, I really love Milwaukee. So we're oh. really excited. Those are our kind of towns, you know I mean? It's our kind of people, our kind of towns. Two nights, stretch out. People want to hear this. People want to hear some music. And uh, yeah, it's right on the river there. I can't wait. Oh, great. Uh, fantastic. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. Can't wait to see you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right. Bye. See ya.